companies. Openers will share their experiences and best practices on how to use omni-channel engagement to improve customer retention and loyalty. So let's welcome them to the stage. Mr. Suresh, Head of Regional CRT3. Mr. Aaron Wu, Head of Product Strategy of Ica Asia. Mr. Eric Soliano, the Country Marketing Manager of Itaigo. And Mr. Stanley Yo, Group Head of Product of iMoney Group. Moderated by Mr. Hasmin from OEH. So before we get started, right, I want to uh, we go around the panel and uh, have you guys introduce yourself. Start with you, Stanley. Hi, uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Stanley. I'm from iMoney Group. Uh, it's today a fintech company. Uh, we have operations in Malaysia, Philippines, and Indonesia. So annually, we serve about uh, more than 30 million of our web visitors on our site. And basically, I'm in charge of the product. Um, literally, is uh, managing, uh, managing the uh, the fund management of uh, engaging, acquiring, and also maintaining uh, the customer base. Uh, my name is uh, Aaron Suliano. I'm the uh, country marketing manager for Indigo Malaysia, which is a uh, discount a restaurant reservation platform which offers uh, high base discounts. So if you guys want to get a meal on a discount, please download the Google and also use it at uh, www.indigo.com.my uh, We are in a couple of countries, uh, and also in Singapore, uh, Indonesia, Hong Kong, uh, Philippines, India and three states, and also, yeah, I just downloaded that you can see. Uh, basically, I handle all the marketing purposes over in Indonesia, uh, and also a couple of uh, stuff also in for Singapore also as well. And, uh, on a personal look, I'm uh, Manchester United player, so I'm in the press uh, since 2013. Oh, You want to make it feel Hey guys, this is Eric, I'm from iCar Asia. So in Malaysia, we probably speak about doing iCar Asia, I'm going to do the uh, In Malaysia, we are known as Carlis of Mine. So what we do is that we run automotive portals around Asia region. Uh, Malaysia, Thailand, and Indonesia. So, Malaysia, we have Carlis of Mind, Indonesia, Romeo, Satu, and uh, Thailand, it's what the car of call. We are all serve about 12 million car buyers every single month. Uh, but what we really want to do is to help you guys throughout the whole journey of buying a car, owning a car, and at the end of the day, selling the car. Yeah, so that's I car Asia. This energy won't be up straight away. I'll see you Better than thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Sorry. I work for Pay. Uh, I'm again a regional marketing. And uh, I think I want to say about uh, myself. I just want to know the audience before we start. How many of you in the marketing uh, department? How many are executing? How many of you are business owners? And how many of you product? Okay. Like marketing and visibility. Okay, cool. Thank you. Alright, cool. So I see mostly marketing and product over here, so try to focus more on that as well. Cool, so um, let's start with you, Suresh. A lot of chat space available on. You guys do a lot of marketing, you do uh, a lot of marketing. So, what are the top channels for uh, communication that you've been using at payment and why? Right, so pay is actually a platform where uh, you can find the food, which is whether you are paying at a merchant offline or buying a deal during that counter who pay any time for a good promotion. Those are what pay that for So we have both online and offline marketing better. So when you ask Chen, uh, we both use both, right? Our when we started we didn't really have pay uh, product, which is called pay pay. So that's like completely 90 over now online. Now, 80% of the distribution channels are coming from offline, so it's about 10,000 over outlets that uh, across uh, Malaysia carries the pay brand, pay the QR codes. Those are what okay, part of the media. So, offline channels, we can't really customize it, but it's a channel for them to uh, activate and transact. Online, we do use uh, email communications, we use communication, uh, we call it omnichannel, the social, everything that we cover. Uh, so those are the channels that we use, and uh, effective for the main users are still the CRM, uh, which 
knowing the user, any channel they can help you that, and you get the relevant channel. Cool, yeah, Aaron, how about you? You guys in a few different countries. Does that change the channels that you focus on? In terms of channels between countries, I think there's a slight shift between each country. But I think the main criteria is that if we think as a car buyer, because for us, we really need to understand our own users before we go through the channels. So thinking about car buyer itself, in Malaysia, we know that car buyers take about three months to decide to buy a car. You don't just wake up one morning and like, hey, I'll buy a car and I just go to the car dealer and buy a car. If you can do that, I will be your friend. Huh? You know, you're, you're probably the property really deep now. But, so Malaysia is three months. Thailand is 2.8 months, Indonesia is 3.2 months. There are variations over there. But thinking about that duration itself, that 3 months on average, you've got to understand that these people, once you reach out to them, they also do fall off on a certain point. Right? Because it's not a Lazada where you go there, make a purchase and leave. You need to consider, 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 consider 80,000 ringgit for a car. That's a big price to pay. You consider, consider, consider again, and three months later, once you feel right, you've got enough information, you will make that purchase. And that's where I think one of the main thing for us is really about retargeting. Because we really need to keep that person hooked on our platform for that whole duration of three months to make that purchase, and then after three months, you know, you don't buy a car for another couple of years. So that three months is very crucial for us. So retargeting is one thing. I mean, very different for you guys. Right? It have to take three months. Uh, I'm sure. So, how does that change your approach? How does that change the channels that you're focusing on and how you look at the customer life cycle? So, basic first, we've got a couple of segmentations for us. We've got a uh, few customers, uh, starters. Uh, we've got our adopters as well. So, explorers, adopters, and also the ones that are about to churn, the ones that we've got on who's that the one we have to take care of. All. So for us, any people is basically trying to uh, for us to keep our customers on board, is to try to uh, make the, uh, keep a loyal customer base, uh, customer base going. Uh, we're talking about you know like throughout the year, you know, uh, keeping them happy. How are we going to incentivize them? Like for us, uh, I think uh, most of it, especially in the Malaysian psyche, we like three things. <laughs> you know? yeah, we like three things. I think if, if anyone looking at uh, shopping at Lazada, so as well, there's a reason why eleven eleven. 10, 10, 12, 12 does very well. The same thing for us as well, you know, like uh, we try to keep uh, a loyal customer base, try to keep your happy and not incentivize them too much as well as well. You know, when they come through, like, um, I think uh, uh, for everyone that works, uh, that, uh, that works on a platform as well, as well to, make a, to make a seamless user journey as well, as well to work. and especially like every time when they dine, they will think of it, they go, oh, I want to eat, I want to eat cheap. Uh, not cheap, like we're discount. Not cheap, we're a discount. And yeah, where do I look? I look for it to go. And our first thing of uh, foremost, we have to try to get a loyal customer journey as well, whereby we try to incentivize them. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Put it in us. Okay, okay, okay. So we try to incentivize them by uh, making more bookings. By making more bookings, we incentivize it even more. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, again, very, very different. Uh, industry you come from, how, how is that customer journey to you? How are the channels that you're focusing on? Right. So, um, basically, most of our customer segmentation, we are very high in tech customer segments. So, basically, the customers who come to our site, uh, basically, they're looking for a financial product, which means they have a need, um, they have a of that. So, either it's a, they want to look for a credit card, or they look for a loan, for some loan. So, basically, we have a pipe. High intent user who comes to the website, and what they do is that basically you make it seamless in terms of uh, customers' experience in capturing the list from, the, from from customers, and then basically there's two channels that they go to. One basically we have a call center agents, which is a kind of a um, very personalized uh, kind of experience for them. Where guy there's a call agent will call them and ask for more details from them and submission of the documents and. Basically, you could understand the needs. And the other journey which is we have, which is that we have an integration directly with the bank. So basically, in Philippines, so basically we work with our um, vendor in uh, Citibank, whereby the customer who put in the lead, basically the, info, the personal information on our site, immediately they know the status of the application. 
whether you approve the credit card or you, you approve the loan. So basically, the whole journey of uh, kind of like an online present as well as an offline personal touch from our core agent. And through this process, what are the key metrics that you're tracking? What what does your dashboard look like uh, when you wake up every day and see what's working, what's not? So, so obviously, the first uh, major tracking that we have really is the conversion. So, which is the first um, metrics, which is uh, how are all the customers who land on our site, how many of them actually been in capture the lead, the contact. So, and from there, it's basically the quality of the leads. Basically. Um, Let's say if we capture lots of uh, leads from, from the web visitors, but the approval rate from the financial institution is low, so basically, which is not a very good uh, uh, kind of uh, customer segment. <coughs> so basically, we wanted to have a high quality leads as well, so that eventually, when we pass all these leads to the financial institution, the approval rate will be much higher. Interesting. Harry, how about you? What is your dashboard look like? What are the key metrics? Yeah, I think conversion as well. That's like number one up there. I mean, we all need to eat, right? So, I, I do agree that conversion is something very important for us to look at, and it's across all our products, it's something which we constantly look at from cost of acquisition to um, each unique user to conversion at the end of the day. But throughout this whole journey itself, um, the whole idea about it is that. It still goes back to conversion. Yeah. So it goes back to the LD conversion. Right. And it's still conversion for you? Well, uh, something similar. So you select for instance in my role, uh, we are a B2B business, but from my role as marketing, I have to look at it as a B2C business. So basically, I have to look at uh, the amount of diamonds that died today. Uh, for instance, like because that's where we take money. Nah. You know, like uh, we charge the restaurant per head, or how many people, how many pets are dying per day, and also for us as well, like how many, uh, like you said, it's a conversion as well. Um, 100,000 people opening our platform, how many of them are converting, how many of them are users, how many of them are existing users as well. So that's the most important thing that we have to look at. And how we work, and sorry, sorry, uh, and how we are going to use that data to market for certain campaigns that's about to come on our platform. Alright, interesting. Uh, Swish, how about you? What are for you the biggest metrics to track? Um, especially at when you guys track a lot of data. Yeah, I think it's the data we have to share to the right? Uh, maybe there's three blocks of data uh, which everybody looks at. Of course, business, uh, revenue, and uh, profit. Is what we think that we look at most every day. You know, on this one. The next one is what we use. Uh, so we have to look at the transactions. And uh, because our products are food related, so stickiness is important. Uh, therefore, the next one is transaction and frequency of the users. So these are the three key blocks that are really to do. And have you ever come across certain data points that have surprised you or come across data points that made you rethink your approach to engagement or rethink how you were marketing users? So have you ever looked at it? Uh, dashboard or looked at your data and come across a certain data point that uh, you weren't expecting to see that has made you rethink your entire marketing strategy or rethink uh, the way you're marketing your users or segmenting them. Yep. Because basically, sometimes you've made assumptions but they just said that was so wrong. Yeah, I think the if you just keep looking at data and the report, uh, you will never notice the changes. Uh, the main thing that the main fact that you see the changes in in your data is when you pivot your OKRs, right? So give you an example. Um, CRM performance markets are usually one of users uh, acquire user, reactivate, re-engage, and the product. So they can be changed that by department to become from concentric to profit, which means can this department rather than just lose communication, convert the communication to be profit, right? So that is become GP in the next OKR. So when you change the OKR, the latest that you see is different, right? It's the same thing you do for vacation. Right. You send the push, send the email, right? So in the past, you used to see how much open rate, how much of them are engaging, people are activated, but that does not really come to this Now, when you see at the GP level, you say, hey, <coughs> what was the real value of the publication? Then that was the real item. So then you realize, hey, the EDM that is signed on day we thought fantastic that we do this much of the open rate. Right? But the business value of this much. 
today because it's not a business value. They do not increase the same competition we do, but increase that tax revenue out of it. And so <coughs> when you change OPR, then you will see the data more deeply. Interesting. Okay, and how about you? So being a car portal, one of the one of our criteria which we used to always look at is time spent on website. Uh, for those of you who have GA, I'm pretty sure you guys stopped that thing for a very long time. And we've been staring at that number for a very long time and it came to a point where we pivoted. We just revamped the whole website a couple of years back. And when we revamped the website, one thing we found was that shit, people started spending less time on our website. Hey, that's a bad thing, right? We, we don't want them to spend less time, right? But when we first saw that number, yes, it was a negative feeling. We were like, shit, our KPIs died. But when we started reviewing it a little bit further, did leads go up? Yes. Conversion went up. More people started coming to the website. But time spent on the website went down. Now, why is this happening? Efficiency. A lot of times when we start building a product, especially, uh, there's so little product people here, but uh, when we build a product, we tend to always add things and add things and add features and make it more and more complicated and we can't really see what makes it complicated until we really strip everything away. And when we did our revamp itself, it gave us the opportunity to really streamline what are some of the key things which we really want to help our car buyers achieve. And by doing that, one thing we noticed, time went down and it wasn't a bad thing. It was actually a good thing because conversion went up. It helped people reach their goal faster and far more efficiently. Interesting. So it was essentially a negative metric when you first saw it. Right. Yeah, it was a nightmare at first. Sure. Right. And how about you? What's the question again? <laughs> when have you made some assumptions and then looked at data and then like, damn, I'm wrong? Oh, get my little we should first. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, obviously, like uh, as marketers, we tend to be uh, more creative. I mean, like, uh, I mean, like, uh, and uh, especially, uh, I think, uh, from a couple of market cases here as well, as well, is how you infuse that, that creative side of it with also the data analytics. Um, there are, uh, I think, the biggest problem what we have is basically the segmentation of uh, what people like to dine because we don't, we're not really privy to the data for us, especially if, if only unless we do like surveys, let's just say, like, especially as populations, we like to eat anything under the sun. Uh, as well the way there are days like nasi kata, and nasi days like nasi lama, as long as rice and blah blah. Alright, so uh, for us, um, I think uh, it's, it's a matter of trying trying to, uh, I, I mean like trying to deliver what's, what's we think is best for, for the market in general, because every market in, in, in all our regions is different. So we, we try to, for instance, okay, we, we look at Asia, uh, we look at KL, uh, what's the demographics there? Like, okay, there's Chinese, uh, I mean, like, uh, we have a certain amount of bullfish, we have a certain amount of Chinese, uh, we have a certain amount of Malay, Malay restaurants as well, as well. So we try to uh, adapt to each situation and when we come up with campaigns. So I think the, the easiest way to understand it as well is basically like to come, come up with campaigns that will cater to all. To all. Alright. Tali, how about you? Presumptions proven wrong. Uh, right. So um, I think it's not so much of how why uh, we discover that the data point uh, give us a surprise. Uh, mostly, I think it actually comes back to uh, the A/B testing that we did. So we did uh, as in IMD basically uh, we wanted the customers to have a seamless experience when they subscribe to the financial product. So one of the incidents whereby uh, we revamp our capture form. Um, so that we thought that the capture form is kind of fancy that uh, actually we can have a more conversion from that. So, but when we did the A-B testing and, um, and we found out that actually the conversion actually dropped. So we kind of like, we know that actually there are certain things which is not right. So we kind of uh, change it and then after that we go up and then we found that the conversion is much higher. So in any way that we test, we don't roll out as a like, complete roll out and found out that the data point is always wrong. We more like we would have a strategy of running an AB test, maybe 90, 10, 80, 20 kind of strategy. Okay. Right. Right. Interesting. And uh, probably a final question from me. Uh, in the next five years, I'll start with you, Adam. In the next five years, where would you put your money when it comes to marketing channels? Which is the one channel that you're betting big on? Oh, tough question. Oh. <laughs> 
You can say email. Email. Huh? You can also say email. <laughs> I mean, of course, we we'll use, use all of it. Um, I mean, like, I still think like social media will still play a big part, a very, very big part, and also especially where there's new channels coming up. I mean, like, um, I, I'm not. Uh, I think, um, especially, I would say like, like Lazada. Without the social media, you know, people wouldn't even know. I mean, do you open idioms? I do. Okay. I do. We follow idioms. I don't know everything. <laughs> Okay, so I rarely, the conversion for me in for EDM, I'm supposed to say everyone is different, but so the conversion for me for EDM is very, very low. Un unless, you know, Ed Woodward is, is getting set the morning, I'll open that up. You know, but um, I think social media will play a massive part in terms of communication, uh, in terms of getting the word out there also as well. And uh, not to mention also, uh, I think I think as well, like push notifications it still plays a massive part as well as, as well in SMSs it takes. Alright, cool. Sammy, how about you? Next five years. I think the next five years is still going to be a lot of uh, traffic acquisition. Uh, so that's one part which is will not stop. So in terms of uh, user growth, it's definitely the objective, which is basically either the paid marketing that we do in uh, in uh, Google or maybe social media as well. But I think more important is that basically, even to drive traffic, is that you can throw money for paid marketing get the traffic. But it's more so as like after you capture all this traffic, how do you actually convert that? So in that sense, I would say that uh, it's pretty much a lot of those that uh, understand the customers are uh, a lot of personalization from our side. So so what you do is that more and more we wanted to get to know the customers need in terms of financial uh, status and, and so on and so forth because basically we have uh, not only the financial products, we also have a credit score. So basically, you can check the credit worthiness and kind of things, as well as how we can actually push. Because we also have a very heavy on content as well. So basically, most of our content or all of our content, basically, how we want to uh, help the, uh, the consumer in terms of uh, upgrading their knowledge and financial. So that's the part whereby we will put, push a lot of those uh, custom content as well. So basically, a lot of personalization, I would say, in the next part. Okay. Cool. Suresh, how about you? Or any new channel that we haven't seen yet and you're hoping to start again? I think even next six months, 12 months is difficult enough to give you an answer, right? So, communication to customers are no longer the same. So, more and more, we don't want to start again. If you really have a control group, if you test in your tools, you will know that some of your communication does not often well. Even if you send or don't send it, it's the same thing. So, let me see. We do over communicate, uh, and also we don't know when to communicate. Right? So, if you ask the next one year or two years, uh, the product itself are the most important. Right? So, products are like you don't need to send incentives, you don't need to send notification, uh, uh, etc. The product itself, if it's sticky enough, and you reward the users for their behaviors, it's a fantastic way of engaging, not communicating. You don't communicate with them, you engage with them, right? right? So that's the essence of it. But onboarding, churn rates, and all that control element, yes, it's very quite complicated. Right. Uh, the essence of the user, like product actors, we need users' engagement, stickiness, so therefore it has to be driven a lot. Okay. Design, not just by telling them. Your opinion is good. Aaron, five years is it's a very long time. <laughs> Uh, I was going to say, that's even worse. But if I'll look at um, five years, I would say, first thing of all, I, I do agree with Suresh about the over communicating with people. I'm not sure how many guys here have apps. Do you guys have apps? <laughs> One, two, okay. <laughs> Three, yes, okay. Um, so, one thing we did notice was that. Cannot be la. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> so what we what we have is that we have a car just app in Malaysia and all other countries as well. So that app helps you buy cars, look out for used cars and things like that. But one thing we noticed was that when we started doing a lot of push notifications, we noticed one matrix started falling. People started uninstalling your app. Yeah. Over communication. People are treating like spam. People don't want to be spam. 
So same thing with emails as well. If you're constantly sending out emails, people are going to be like, okay, another one, I'm just going to ignore it, it's fine. So one really big problem is that we tend to over-communicate, but it's alright to communicate if whatever you communicate with the person is relevant for the individual. If you are currently looking for a proto MyV and I send you something about proto MyV, you will let most likely click on it. But if you're today looking at a BMW and I send you a MyV, you're like, hey, doesn't match my, my criteria. So I think my money will go on to personalization. It's not so much about spending it on different channels, but I think really customizing your message to meet your audience so that when your audience really get the message, it's not a broad message, it's something which is customized for them at the moment of time. So if you look at, uh, when it comes to finance, advisory, or, or knowledge kind of things, most of the uh, advisory that you can get is mostly from the business side. So on the personal finance side, you see that there's a need whereby a lot of the, um, the people on the street actually they do not have a lot of those uh, financial knowledge or where to go and what kind of uh, financial product which is suitable for their uh, income status. So that is the part that actually we're trying to close again. And then we do it well and then we work with uh, all our um, partners, um, financial institutions like bank, insurance, and then uh, it's a very exciting space uh, because uh, you know that in financial space we have an open banking where more and more of uh, how we actually can uh, work with the financial institution. So there is a space that actually we're going in for that. And we will do it, we will try to do it well as well. So I mean of us versus there are so many other financial things that you can do, you can do a wallet, you can do all kind of things, but we stay focused on that. <coughs> and we what we do is that we wanted to help in terms of how the people on the street, and normal people, let's say, if they check, uh, if they check their income status or probably their financial status using our credit score, it's not good. So how we can help them in terms of uh, educating them, and then they improve their financial status, and then they can be eligible for all kind of financial products. Same goes for all those uh, unbanked um, clients that we have in Philippines as well as Indonesia. So that is the speed that we are focused on. Uh, just that uh, iMoney has a very good uh, platform to, to check your credit score. If you want, very, very nice. Yes, I good, by the way. Thanks. <laughs> Alright, uh, we have time for another question. Do we have another question? No? Uh, Alright, guys, thank you so much. Mine's over there. Uh, <laughs> thanks a lot for listening. Thanks. Thank you so much.